Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast, episode 463. This is the official Detroit Lions podcast to Reddit. I am your dashing coast, Chris, and look at the dash. The dash, the dash, the dash. And with me is my very gifted and glorious co-host and good friend, Jeff the Riz. Risden, how are you doing, brother? It is good to be back live with you this week. I missed you last week, Chris. I did too, but man... Well, we'll talk about it a little bit. It was much, much Yeah, needed. we will. We got a lot to talk about today. We'll talk about Scotty Montgomery. What's going on? Well, we know what's going on. That'll be easy. That's an easy one to close out. Uh, ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson just talked about coming back. And uh, we've got some info on that from the uh, the the talk that he had with, uh, oh, what's his name, Tim Twentyman. Uh, we'll Tim Twentyman. Talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about the Lions coaching staff, who's staying, who isn't, what's going on there. Got some Lions betting news. What to look for. From the young players, and we're gonna do some lining up for next week's show because I think it's gonna be a big, big one. I think you guys, well, it's always a big one over here, but this show's gonna be a big one, and you guys are gonna love it. We got all that, a whole lot more. It's a great show lined up. Riz, are you ready to go, my man? Yeah, let me move my microphone over here. Let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. That's me. My microphone's right here now. It was way over there. <laughs> this is it. Officially, we're into it now, man. This is great. Uh, want to take a quick moment, like we do at the beginning of every one of our shows, and thank our most recent subscriber, Sam McNochton. I hope I got that right, Sam. Sorry, Sam. Sam McNochton, uh, latest subscriber. You can get your name in lights, too. Hit the subscribe button. You'll show up down there as we go live. We appreciate all you subscribers and uh, people who like on the YouTube. It appreciate it. it. helps us out a lot. We love you. All right. Well, here we are. We're back after a much needed week off. Riz, let's just senior bowl. I mean, people I don't think really understand just how frenetic the week is. And when we get, and we'll talk about a little bit about it, but when you get hit with like the Wi Fi effect, the cascading effect it has on everything you do, it's, yeah, it, it's derailing. It, it was, it was, it was, it was so, so it's, much. That it's was, a very exhausting, time-consuming, sleep-deprived week. It's awesome, and I love doing it. That's why, that's why I go every year. But it does require some rehab, some recovery from it. Uh, we rolled in the last week. I had uh, a couple things on the home front that I had to get taken care of. Uh, you had a couple things on the work front that you had to get taken care of. Uh, we, are, uh, we were talking before we came on the air. We're both better now. So uh, it, it's all it's all getting much better. But uh, last week was, was would have been very tough to do a show where we weren't like completely distracted by all the life, this. The life, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that we missed. Yeah, it was it was it was nuts. It was it was funny. Um, yeah, the and it's, it's it was Sunday through Friday nonstop. And I mean the uh, the last night was was awesome that we spent. We just very, went to a very quiet bar. Sam and Riz and I, we did, we did, we actually did a lot of work. We did a lot did. of prep. <laughs> we really did <laughs> for next year, and and really line next year up. I think really, really better than we have. That, yet, that was you know? that was such a nice night sitting up in that lounge, just and watching watching the rain crash into the windows. Honestly, was yeah. was really it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. So anyway, we're back. We got the week off. Thank you all for giving us a week off. I know it's your show, and you guys like to hear us. And it's a little bit right now. Things are a little bit quiet on the western front but we're back we'll keep we'll keep making it's, noise for you. oh it's it's perking up we yeah. got we got a lot coming for us yes. we got the combine in three weeks uh i there's um if you if you're not sick of me you'll get sick of me next week because i'm on the radio all week nah. <laughs> don't give him so your for those of you in the mitten state <laughs> turn on the huge show don't give him your good be, stuff uh, bro <laughs> I, oh yeah, it's all it's all good. I yeah. I actually get to talk some basketball next week. I'm kind of excited about that. So nice, nice. All right, well, let's get into the Lions talk. Um, did you guys get to tan the other half of your faces at Senior Bowl? No, we we didn't, and it it was it was like Rembrandt lighting all the time <laughs> with the red to the white. It, it was really crazy. was. But, yeah. Um, but but I had the sunglass <laughs> mark on this side of my head for a very long time, uh, up until. Uh, probably Super Bowl Sunday. I still had like the mark, like you can see where I was wearing my sunglasses. I peeled like right here, <laughs> right here, 
and then on my <laughs> neck right here. And I, I, I dove in. I still have the old aloe handy just in case. It saved the day. I, I, I was looking pretty rough there. Everybody's left side. You could tell instantly <laughs> if you were media or team personnel because if you were a team personnel, the right side of your face was sunburned because they were on the other side of the stadium. Yep. We were on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Um, oh, thank you, Tim. He's he looked into the Slack chat, did the Sam Martin Martin package. Got to fire it up on the first. Y'all do great work. Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate you. You'll enjoy it. I'm telling you. Um, I I even kind of took a week off from there this last week. I I just had so much I had to do and catch up on. I I, I did that. But let's get into the talk. Let's start off with uh, Ben Johnson. We got to talk Lions. That's why we're here. Uh, ben Johnson yes. talks about coming back. He did it on Tim, Tim Twentyman today. And man, it was such a good interview. Ben is such a such a good dude. Um, Ben's, he talk- Ben's a very smart, savvy talker. Yep, yep. And he said it. You heard it here. He he didn't use these two words, but he said basically this. It, he's in his dream job, right? He came back because oh. of the people. He came back and he took his name out of the hat. They said it again. They revamped it or, or reiterated it. He took his name out of the hat and to and not decided not to be in the game to go anywhere else, you know, to take himself away from the temptation of what they could throw at him and what they could offer because he's been here. And he, he started here. If you remember with Matt Patricia and he, he's, he said he is really excited at what's to come in Detroit. He has unfinished business here and um, he's just really, really excited and loves what he does. It's definitely as uh, Brandon says, it's a must listen after here, go over to the lions, uh, the Lions YouTube, it's there, but Please it's do. worth it. I want to talk yeah. about a couple things he said and put some context on it, though. Uh, one of the things he talked about, uh, he mentioned um, about people there putting the work in. And, you know, the mm-hmm. folks in the Slack have heard me say it, and it's been said a number, you know, a number of times there. We've talked about it. They talk a lot about who's doing the work and doing the work there. Um, I would go back, if, if you want to go man in the man in the arena, the, the Tom Brady kind of series with the Patriots. I re- I've started yeah. revisiting it again, and I'm on, I think, episode three, and they talk about how the guys give each other a hard time, but it's like, oh, wow, you're knocking off early, huh? And, and they just rib each other about putting in the work, right? And a lot of that mentality is really what's going on in Detroit here. And it's funny because I see how Matt Patricia – why he was doing the things he did. They talk about how Coach Belichick uh, would needle players, right? I th- that's exactly what Patricia was after, but he couldn't execute because that's not who he is. It's not and who he, he is, Chris. And it's not who the players were. They weren't ready for that either, right? If this is not just, and I'm not standing up for Matt Patricia, right? Because he has all kinds of failures, and, and, and I want to make that clear. But the players weren't ready for that kind of an environment either. For a, they could those those players would not have done well in New England with Belichick because that's not who they were. That was not the culture. And they talk early in that series about how they built the culture. But you know, he was here for that, and now he's here with Dan Campbell. He talks about how he's been friends with Dan. And now he's in a position where he reports to him and, you know, it's a different kind of role. It's different when you report to someone, especially if they're friend, you've really got to talk about and think about what those relationships and those, those boundaries are. But he talks about that, does a really, really good job, but he talks about putting in the work and putting in the work is what matters. And, and you know, I've, you guys, again, in the Slack know I've talked about it. it who works? Who's working? If players are working. If coaches are working, it's about who's putting in the work and being accountable for doing the work you do and being prepared. And that's how this team wins is through preparation and putting in the work to be ready. The situational pieces, it's just not coaching situational football. It's players understanding the situation they're in. I'll go back because, again, it's fresh in my mind. Teddy Bruschi talking about playing the the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And and when the... um. He looked at the end of the game and they were moving slow. They weren't, they just weren't situationally aware to move fast enough to score. They were in a position where they could come back and they, they didn't do it because they weren't aware that that whole thing from players to coaches put in the work. You understand your situations. You understand situational football. So to a person, you're there to do your job and can do your job and are ready to execute. And that's what you're going to see. I, we're going to, I'll talk about some of the pl- things that are going to happen with players this year that you're going to see. But right now I want people to really focus on that. That's a really, really big piece. 
Uh, Vitas, yes, you heard right. Coaches execute the playbook. You know, Twentyman was kind of having a good time saying, oh, I bet you wish the players were here with all the work you're doing on the playbook. And he says, we put the new coaches out in the field and we make them break the huddle, run the plays, do the stuff. They, everybody goes through it. Again, they understand the playbook, the situations and what's going and on. Having that, that firsthand experience and understanding of like, okay, this is the spacing that we have to have. This is the timing on the motion or the, the communication that you have to have on defense for the switches or, you know, the, the read that you're going to like, if the coaches have to live that you better believe that they're going to have a better way of understanding and how to communicate that to the players and can, and can go out there and demonstrate it. If it, if it's a visual learning player, somebody that needs to see it done. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, there are people that learn that way. I'm not one of them, but there are people that learn that way. And that's that for them to be able to, to go out and say, Yes, this is what I, and I can show you exactly why you're doing what you're doing because I've done it and I understand why. And I understand why you're not doing Y, why you're doing X and why we're telling you to do X yep. when, when we tell you to do like, that's, that's sure as hell wasn't happening under Patricia it sure as hell wasn't happening under Caldwell. Right. Like that yeah. level of detail was n nowhere to be found in Detroit for a very long time. Yeah. And, and I mean, Caldwell had situational football issues. We, I mean, we saw that with, with Campbell at the beginning of the season, how he's cleaned it up. I mean, this is top to bottom. One of the things they talked about through the, you know, the 2004, 2005 Super Bowls, when that kind of team kind of did the dynasty, you know, three out of four years, um, they, they talked about growing up together. And, the, you know, you talk about the youth movement going on with the Lions right now. Um, Jared Goff working, you know, he talked, Ben talked about working with Goff this year and how last year and how he's going to work again with this year and expect a little more out of him, help develop him even more. They're growing up together, all of these guys. And and you're, you're, you're seeing, uh, I think it's just, it's a heck of an opportunity. I hate to make the Patriots comparison. And, and like I said, I'm just back to the man in the arena kind of thing. I just watched it's fresh in my mind, but it's really interesting yeah. to see some of those real successful things that the Patriots did that aren't like the Patriots way. They're just winning ways and see how those are translating and being kind of embraced in Detroit. So those things make sense. I also want to talk about something. It, 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 it cuts across what you're seeing right now, but he talks about how he trusts Tanner and, he trusts Hank and he trusts all the guys in there, but he spoke about Tanner and spe very specifically because he was brought up and he says, you know, if I want to get a jump on the next day and, and notice he didn't, he's not saying next week, right? He's talking about the next day. <laughs> I want to get a jump on the next day. I know I can put Tanner in there and he's going to execute the way that I want him to. He's in with, in my voice, in coach Campbell's voice, and he's going to go out and give them what, they wanted or what they would have delivered and that's real trust i mean if you've led people if you've been in a, as in a position as a leader one of the hardest things to do is to actually delegate especially if you're a new leader because usually you were really really good at your job and you got promoted because you're really really good at your job and now you have people that work for you who are probably not as good at your old job as you are but and you it's have to hard to them. let that yeah. go man yeah. it's hard yeah. to build that trust right to 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 learn to try and trust because yeah. it's that's been you. That's what you do. Um, that, yeah, that's that's a difficult learning process for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and giving that to them so that and then helping them, right? Helping develop your leaders is is really really important. So for Ben to be able to do that, and I'm going to throw you a con a counter to that, and we're going to talk a little bit about Aubrey Pleasant this last season, <laughs> and we heard it. It, it I came knew out it. to the public, you know, to the public space. He wasn't on the same page as the rest of the coaches. They didn't get their voice out of Aubrey Pleasant. They want Aubrey Pleasant's excellence. They want Aubrey Pleasant's style. They want what he does, but they want him to deliver their message. And that's what was not being not, delivered. And not that's why his message, yep. their message, and, and he's the conduit. He is the messenger. When they removed him, Dan talked about, we just needed a new messenger. Yep. Like it wasn't that the message was broken. It was that he wasn't communicating the message that needed to be communicated properly. And that that's why he's gone. Don and H. Uh, by the way, it proved up being a good, good, a prudent choice. Yeah. Don H asks, is it even possible to disseminate his knowledge to the next level without having the next man up having the same level of acumen? Well, no. And that's why you kind of piecemeal parts of it. And you, you, your job is to get somebody who can do it. Here's, here's the hard part as a leader, because this is really what your job is. And nobody 
wants to believe this, but as a leader, your job is to help grow your people so they can reach their potential, which is very, very possibly far past your own, and you have to be comfortable with that. That's what a good leader does. If you can grow people to be better than you are, to where you can learn from them, that is the very, very best kind of leadership. They may do it differently, and that's okay, because you don't want everybody yes. necessarily to do it your way. That's where innovation comes from. That's where better, you know, you, you get better, stronger, faster at doing things. You want, you want that person to do their way and to uh, bring their knowledge up to in their way to be able to do what you can do, but even better. So um, you to, to take a guy who's your junior and who operates at less of a level, you give him pieces along the way and help grow him into that, into the big, into the whole, right? I mean, Riz, you've, you've done that with some people. You watch some people who've wrote, written for you uh, and, and gone on to other places grow. They started off pretty green behind the years and got a lot of work, a lot of help to become very, very talented people, right? But they got their start. And look they at, our, look at our boy Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got their start where you know with a, with a leader that yeah. helped them. So that's what we, that's that's kind of how that works. I want to go on to one last thing that he talked about about why he's back, and it's about the O line. Uh, he loves them all. He loves them all, and he talked about one thing that's a lot of fun. Um, you know, they were talking about the playbook and messing things up, and oh my gosh, Panay is such a great player. Any any crazy plays for him? And he talked about you know uh, talking to uh, Frank Ragnow at the Super Bowl, who should have his foot in a cast right now after surgery. I don't know why we're stalling, but anyway, he talked to Frank right now <laughs> and uh, he, he's, uh, you know, Frank's like, we got to do those quarterback sneaks. He's like, yeah. What do you think about lining up Panay at quarterback? Right. <laughs> Holy God. Yeah. Like it's okay. Okay. We'll talk about it. We'll think about it. what a hilarious, yes. fun thing to do. Think about, I mean, I've thought about this and I think Kansas city did a terrible job of executing it in the super bowl, but that ring around the rosy play. The thing is, yes. is, you can line up anybody anywhere out of that ring around the rosy. And if you snap immediately when they're set, and if you watch the Super Bowl, there was about a four count where the defense got to read the offense in that play before they snapped. You come out, Penne's the, 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 uh, the quarterback. Goff is split out in a slot. You know, you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. And while they're trying to figure it out, the ball's already going. They have to react. They don't know. And all of a sudden, you've got a ton of bricks like Panay rolling up. That's where that ring around the rosy thing has the power, is the ability to put people in all kinds of strange positions and then execute immediately. No no, no chance to read. Just go. Especially if you're a read and react defense, and there are a few of those on the Lions' yeah. schedule, where yeah. they're they're not dictating the action. They're trying to react. This, this was Matt Patricia. This is one of the reasons why his defense has failed. It was because they read and reacted instead of being dictating the action. Yep. When you can do that as an offense, and you see a defense like, oh man, like they're going to be, they're going to still be pointing it. And you saw the Eagles do that. There, yep. there was a couple of the the touchdown plays that they had where they did the mirror images where they threw the route to the one side one time and the other side the other time, and the Eagles missed the switch and the the exchange both times on either side because they're tr they're still talking through like who's got who coming out of the out of the the motion I, yeah. like oddly <laughs> that was two different plays i saw i saw andy reed talking about it the, the first it one was. was called corn dog right uh, <laughs> and, and it was that was meant to be a run play but there was a read they had that they got they they pulled the pass off on that and then the other play was a different play it was a design pass that they went out to but i mean they looked identical right and and mm -hmm. slay got slay got just destroyed on the on the one that first one i feel bad for the poor guy because i like Darius Slay, I like everything about Darius Slay, and I, I wanted to be successful. He didn't have the best Super Bowl. No, no, he didn't. Yeah. All right. That's so okay. That's it. I love, I love the thinking, right? And 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 look, the fact that Ben is out there talking about a quarterback sneak with Panay, I'm not sure you're going to look for that play. If he's talking about it now, I'm not sure you're going to look for that next year. But I, I can tell you that there's going to be some massive creativity from this offense next year. All right, so I'm, I'm for it, and I'm glad he's. I'm glad that he further elaborated on why he's back and why he was excited to be back. And you brought it up, the, the Patricia holdover guys, man. They've got unfinished business in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, if why would you leave now when you've been through the depths of hell? Yeah, and you're coming out the other side. Like, you you don't jump off before you get to those pearly gates, man. Like, you, you ride ben, that until it dies. You're Ben Johnson. You've done this one year, and you've got 
the guys up front that he has to work with, all of them on contract this year, this coming year, all of them, right? No, no fear there. You got Jared Goff who grew, and and he he talked about how he grew in the off season and had ownership of the of the offense that they worked together to build it and leverage some things and then had some expectations for him to grow, and then. This year, they're going to work with him when he comes back again, and they're going to have more expectations for him to grow as well. I expect more growth and great work out of Jared Goff this year better than last year. That's what I expect to see. He's only 27, 28 now. Um, that's a young guy at quarterback. That's a guy who's just hitting his prime. People who I, I, I think people are underestimating Jared Goff and what he brings. Do we need a backup? Of course, we need a backup. We are abs- shameful.ly uh, in a whoa, I mean, he's in, he's in a, golf is literally the only quarterback on the roster. Yeah, they don't even yeah. have one on a future reserve deal. But even last year, we effectively <laughs> didn't have one, right? I mean, throughout the twenty twenty two season, we have. I mean, there was guys on the roster, but come on, Tim Boyle, Nate Sudfeld, but but <laughs> Nate. yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is something that we talked about um, in Mobile with several people, and also I, I talked about it on the huge show today. The the stakes have risen with the expectations, which we're going to talk about, where if Jared Goff goes out, you can't trot out Tim Boyle, Nate Sudfeld, David Blau, Jeff Driscoll. And it, it, you, yeah, sure, the team's better, but you can't, you can't lose those games. Let's say Goff goes out for four games. You've got to go three and one in those games. You, you have to expect that they're going to go three and one with him. Yep. You have to have the same expectation for the backup to come in and handle that business. Otherwise, you're not ready to compete at the next level, yep. and that's that's where we need them to be. And I mean, if you're if you're the San Francisco 49ers and your third string and your fourth string and so on, and they told two friends, yeah, no, it was I mean, that, that that was that was just ludicrous. But yeah, your point's well taken, though. Like you you see it. Like I, I watched a Browns team in 2021 coming off of a year where they won their first playoff game since 1994. They won that game in Pittsburgh, their version of Green Bay, with yep. their head coach quarantined in his basement with COVID. One of the greatest sporting moments that I've ever seen um, from my hometown. And I am not a Browns fan. I'm not. Yep. But it, I, I loved it. I loved seeing it. And then, then 2021 happens, and Baker Mayfield gets hurt. But he's not hurt enough that you trust your backup Case Keenum, pretty good backup, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You don't trust him enough, so you ride it out with with Baker. You ru- effectively ruin his career. You basically paid Case Keenum $6.5 million for nothing. Like that, The Lions can't do that. They can't be in that situation. Mm-hmm. You can't be in a situation like Tennessee where you've got Ryan Tannehill backed up by a rookie and Malik Willis who cannot play and who gets benched for a guy signed off the Lions practice squad in Josh Dobbs. And by the way, yeah. Josh Dobbs was a hell of a lot better than, than Malik Willis ever could be. That's You can't be that in Detroit. You cannot do that. It's it's negligence to, to even consider not upgrading your backup quarterback role. And uh, I will hear no different. Knock, 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 knock. Malik truthers, are you out there? All right, Um. so here we go. <laughs> I left. I was just weekend um anyway so there you go that's um that's that's all that let's talk about uh dave uh canales people are like what what are you talking about he is the new tampa bay (laughs) (laughs) new tampa bay buccaneers offensive coordinator why do we care what do we care about on that that on the detroit lions podcast because because uh, employee of four days scotty montgomery was on an interview (laughs) with Tampa Bay for a promotional position had never even considered the possibility of bringing somebody in. And in the same year, they go interview for a promotion Riz, I mean, we talked about this a couple different ways in the slack. Holy cow. That was, I mean, you get a couple of things. Number one, bud, you're out. We hired you. Now you're automatically looking for job. Get the heck out. Right. Boom. Or right. The other side of the story is, hey, yeah, I'm, I'd love to sign, but I got this other interview lined up. It's, you know, for this position with this team. I'm signing with you guys with this position because, let's be honest, it's probably not it, but I want to get the experience while I can. You guys okay with it? I, I don't want to come in and, you know, burn any bridges because I'll tell you right now, uh, this is, this is. I mean, people talk about it, but I'm telling you, in, insider, Detroit is a destination. Detroit is a destination for the NFL and NFL players and coaches. Nobody wants to burn the bridge in Detroit. 
I'm just telling you straight up. So I think he came in with a, a pretty clean, you know, this is pretty straight, you know, from the, from the beginning. I, I would, I would hope so. And I have asked several people on both sides and nobody has really known whether I'll say this, knowing the people that I know in Detroit, if he, if he goes, if he takes the job and then springs it upon them, oh yeah, by the way, there's this interview thing that I'm going to, that's not what happened. Um, I don't know. I don't know that factually. So you can't quote me on that. But I will tell you, if he would have done that, I don't think he'd still be here. I no. think they would have strongly encouraged him to um, jump off the pirate ship and, and try to try to take so, and stuff the to job that nobody themselves. wanted. That, that, <laughs> no, 11 people interviewed for that job, Chris. 11. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wanted it. Nobody mm. want that. That's a dead end. That's a bad job right now. OC it's, after Tom Brady leaves with their offense as old and decrepit as it is with a lame duck head coach who could very well be fired by Halloween. No, yeah. ain't nobody taking that job that's, that can get a better job somewhere else. And guess what? Scotty Montgomery has a better job. Technically, in the pantheon of NFL job titles, this was a demotion. Assistant head coach is above a coordinator. Like that that's you're not you're not you're not taking a demotion to that. Yep. Sorry, you're just not. And and Scotty Montgomery, the question popped up in there is it, it came through the uh the chat earlier. Is he all that? Scotty Montgomery is all that. He has been very successful on on the on the he, entire journey of his career. He's done very, very well. He he's a very well respected coach. He was a guy that was expected actually to get more offseason looks this year before he went to Detroit. Not necessarily head coaching jobs, uh, offensive coordinator interviews, passing game coordinator interviews, running game coordinator interviews, all that kind of stuff. Detroit wound up giving him the best offer, um, assistant head coach and running backs coach. Uh, that That's a position that you can springboard off of. Um, by the way, Deuce Staley landed on his feet in Carolina. Good for him. Uh, good for him. Happy for him. Deuce dropped in for him. And, and wound up in, in, in great shape. And, that, that's and now he's good he's going to be working with Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell hired as a senior assistant in Carolina. Yeah, it, another they're good putting one. some weird band back together. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting melody. But hey, they're expected to do well, and and we'll see. I think they've got they've got some pieces they need to 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 put that team into a real competitive watch, position. Watch but what they could, do at quarterback. Yeah, because what, what say. they do at quarterback <laughs> will matter for Detroit more mm -hmm. than a little. Yeah. <laughs> It's um... and the other thing I will say on that front, and this is something that Huge and I talked about a lot today. Pay real close attention to what Derek Carr signs for, because Jared Goff is a better quarterback than Derek Carr, and Derek Carr is going to get in the neighborhood of fifty million dollars a year. And you better believe that Jared Goff has not taken one penny less than what Derek Carr signs for. When Jared Goff, if he has the year that we hope that he has next year, and builds upon the year that he had in twenty twenty two. He's he's getting paid next off season, and that's going to be pay real close attention to what Derek Carr gets because Derek Carr sets the market. He's the first guy yeah. out there. He can yeah. sign tomorrow if he wants to. He doesn't yeah. have to wait till March sixteenth for free agency. He's if he signs for, I'll just tell you, you want that number under forty five million a year because if it's over that, that's going to really, really wreak havoc with the Lions' plan of having a really strong core around mm -hmm. him. Because you just can't, you at, at that point you can't pay Amon Ra and Panay and Frank Ragnow again and other people. Like you just can't. There's not enough room there. You're going to wind up being like the Saints, who are going to cut between or restructure between eight and seventeen players. I talked to the Saints Saints guy today. There, they have legitimately identified seventeen players that they either have to cut outright or seriously renegotiate. Just so they can draft, because they don't have the, they don't have enough money to sign their draft picks right now. Like they have to get to that point soon. I think if, if you're paying there's off a couple 50, things to think about. Million, there's, there's a couple things trouble. to think about. Just 52 watch that. million, fifty-two million today before the salary cap increase is 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 the number it is. 
52 million next year yeah. after the next salary cap is is something different. We had a quarterback this right. year for the first time in a while, 17 and a half percent of the the cap space he took up. So it was it was more than the less than 12 percent that's always been bandied about a bit. And then there's the other piece of this. That's such and, a stupid that, stat though because it's and it's Brady. I want people <laughs> I want people to think about this because you saw it with Ben Johnson. You saw it very clearly with the guy who had a head coaching job if he wanted it, and he didn't. He didn't want it. He didn't take it, and it's millions of dollars more that it's worth. There's, I don't call it a hometown discount, but Detroit is a destination. It is a destination place. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jared Goff take a deal that isn't the biggest deal. That's I wouldn't call it a super friendly deal as he's not coming in with a coupon or anything, but I think he's going to come in at a fair value that the team can work with because I think also Jared Goff wants to win, believes he can win, and he can believes he can win with the core that's around him. And I think, you know, Jared Goff has a whole boatload of money. He has generational, intergenerational money, right? That's, and, and sure, make all you want, do the thing. Everybody wants their money, but some guys want to ring. And you're at a place where, uh, we'll get to it, it's starting to look like the Lions are becoming a place where you can get a ring. And to be that and person that's, and that's see That's the dynamic you do, that you have to weigh in. Yep. Yeah. That's where I think it you're going to find the opportunities with, with Jared and some of the other guys. It might be more important him. for him because, because he's been in a situation where he has come very close to the top and then saw it all fade away very badly and and – some of that, some of that, more more than some of that's on yes. him. Yeah. But it, he might want that. It took but a then shot. you get into the dynamics. It took a shot yeah. on. Yeah, they gave him a chance that nobody else was going to. He could have very that's easily exactly blown right. to the wind after, especially after his first year here. They could have gone after Malik and Willis he, like the Truthers wanted. They could have done a lot of things, but they didn't. They doubled down on Jared Goff, and that means something. That means something, I'm telling you. Yes, it does. And that's also why you all shouldn't be afraid of drafting a first-round quarterback because he's not going to feel threatened by it. Yep. yep, I, yep. I hear that all the time. That Nope, that's, that's not the reality of Jared Goff right now. It's just not. Will he take less money? Maybe there is a tremendous amount of pressure from the NFLPA on these players to not do that. Yeah, sure there is. That's but we, and that, we've, that, and that the NFL PA that. is not always looking out for the PA for the players. Oh though. The God, PMA. no, they're not. And that's the thing, <laughs> you know. And 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 <laughs> that's the really thing. Not. Anytime you put some large organization between the people and and anything else, that large organization starts working to the benefit of that organization, whether it's a corporation, a union, whatever else. Hundred percent wind up get big enough and they take care of themselves first and that's that's always so frustrating because um it's it's you know the people that pay them those are the ones that do the work and put the work into the ones that deserve to yeah. to get the the, yeah. the, the there, there's a whole lot of we're, we're gonna have that conversation next off season i hope we have to have that conversation next off season that jared goff continues the strong play that he finished 2022 with and it leads to a division title and a home playoff game and god willing a home playoff win yeah. Uh, all those things are very much in grasp, but it, it does somewhat require Jared Goff to be the same Jared Goff that he was in 2022, if not better. Yeah. If he's not, then we're for conversation next time. But right for for right now, he's 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 great, man. Yeah. The the way he handled the way the way that season unfolded was was a really strong testament to Jared Goff and what he represents for this team and what he and the faith that Brad had in him and that Jared very implicitly understands that. And that's, that's, that's going to be difficult to, to Fisher. Yeah. RC two, where do you rank a quarterback all time? If he wins a super bowl for the Detroit lions, I asked that's my, that's just a rehash of my question. I've been okay. asking since last summer is, is Jared Goff a better quarterback than Matthew Stafford? If he wins a playoff game, <laughs> that's a real head scratch. He might be, I will, I will put it this way. I'm one of those weirdos. I think Kurt Warner is a better historic quarterback than Dan Marino. They're roughly the same statistically. Yeah, Dan Marino. Was Dan Marino's true. arena league stats are trash. Yes, oh uh, yes, but Kurt <laughs> Warner took the Rams, the Rams, back when like they hadn't won in, they hadn't been in the well, they were in the Super Bowl in 1979 with Vince Ferragamo. I remember that. I watched that game on a black and white TV in my grandma's basement. <laughs> They hadn't been there since. And then he won one. Like, 
you, you can't tell me that that's not better than what Dan Marino did joining a team that was from the Super Bowl. He comes in as the golden child and proceeds to lose more playoff games than he wins, throws more interceptions than touchdowns in those playoff games. Like, sure, he's tremendous in the regular season, but I want a winner. Playoff winners? Yeah, give me Kurt Warner on that. And yeah. That would be the case with Jared Goff. Like, where, where does he go in that pantheon? He goes way the hell up. Yeah. Because he went there with the Rams. Again, they had fallen off. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wound up being the situation that, you know, and Cal obviously before. he didn't, he wasn't the catalyst. To, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cal, Cal before that, right? I mean, he's, he's a guy that's come, gone to bad teams and put them close to the top. That was, I mean, yeah, that was. That was not a great program uh, when he went there. And by the way, their coach was Sonny Dykes, the TCU coach. Just keep that in mind. There you go. A little fun tidbit there. Yeah. All right. So Scotty Montgomery, great hire. Good to, good to have him on. Uh, Dave yes. Canales took the job as of offensive coordinator. So Scotty is locked in in Allen Park for us this so, year. And I think that's a very, very good move on the Detroit Lions part. And I think that probably, well, it doesn't completely end any coaching tree drama that we might because they are still forming staffs in Arizona and Indianapolis and actually uh, quite a few offensive staffs around the league. Yep. I don't expect anybody notable to get taken, but keep an eye on, I put this in the Slack the other day, keep on Seth Ryan. He's been asked to interview for the head coach, receivers coach. He is the current assistant wide receivers coach for Detroit. He is Rex Ryan's son parenthetically. Uh, with the Jets, they have requested permission to interview him. Uh, and he has very deep ties with Shane Steichen, the new head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. They don't have a staff at all. So it would be shocking. I, I don't know that he will leave. I don't know that. I don't know Seth at all. But it, it wouldn't be surprising if he took one of those two opportunities if offered to him because it is a climb up the coaching ladder. He's 28 years old. He's young enough that he can he he's he can strive and that's fine. Spread your wings, young man. Do what you can. Yeah. Um, there's also a low level assistant on the defensive side of the ball who is going to get some consideration in Arizona. Um, I've been told by people in Arizona that not to worry about it, but it's one of those things where they just want to like, what do you see in our defense? Um, and why would you draft Tyree Wilson at three? Boom. All right, I, I want to hit really quick combat sack. That will be in every mock I do. Just telling <laughs> y'all, every <laughs> mock I do until I'm proven wrong, we'll have Tyree Wilson at number three to the Arizona Cardinals. Combat sack coming back. Looking at O-line stats made me realize how good Fraley is. That guy is an unsung hero. Yes. We've had the hymnal since 2019 here on Hank Fraley. We, we've been singing that. Yeah, yeah, we have been singing loud and proud. I mean, you might like, um, oh, God. Hail the apocalypse from Avatar, but we're louder than that on the Hank Fraley tune because new album drops tomorrow. There you go. I knew I could set you up. Um, the uh, Hank Fraley is that. absolutely one of the most fantastic teachers I've ever seen in all the years at Senior Bowl. Incredible. When we saw him in 2019, yes. when we saw him again last year, um, he, we knew we knew immediately and he's been he's been fantastic go look at his his interview with us last year from the senior bowl he's he is absolutely a fantastical guy super super smart hard the worker the way he talked about All about that. that he views himself as a teacher yep more than a coach he's a teacher like that's 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 cool man yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, I've been around some some line coaches in some other situations and some other assistant coaches when you say, so what are you teaching the players? I'm like, they're pros. They, I don't have to teach them squadouche. <laughs> that, yeah. that ain't going to fly in Detroit. Mm-hmm. That, that, nope. that might have flown um, in Detroit in 2012 and 2016. It doesn't fly anymore. That's right. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. This is a this is a good one, and I want to. Oh yeah, sorry, I want to hit this real quick. Bally Sports filing for bankruptcy couldn't happen to a better group. Uh, but I want to talk about so strange for, the, for this team getting. Bally's off. still trying to bill me for a membership that I canceled in 1998. Not the, not the gym, not the gym. I hate that company. <laughs> I hate that company. They're, they're uh, affiliated. I, oh yeah, they are. Aren't they? Oh my God, it's worse. They are. worse yet. That's where it came from. Come on, bring yeah. Vic Tanny back. <laughs> All right, let me let me get. Oh my me... God, <laughs> Vic Tanny! <laughs> oh crap! 
there's probably five people that are watching that understand that reference. Yeah, it's so great. All right, let me let me let me get to. I want you know. I want to give this one to you right off the top. You're going to be the hype man. It is so strange to see the Detroit Lions getting this kind of off season hype. Riz, and it is. It's you 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 kind of threw this as hey, let's talk about this, and it, it hit me that you're so so right. I mean, just the love. Every day. I mean, it's we're and dodging they, flying forks and knives and torches and pitchforks and boulders every year this time, trying to hope and dream and, hey, maybe we can get that pick to get us out of the basement. And here we are, bro. We were solid second place, and everybody has us trending up. And you saw it. You saw it in Mobile. When we talk to people that cover other teams and when people that we haven't seen in a while, and they're all, like, like congratulating us, like, we just, like, birth twins or something like they're so excited and and i dare say that people outside detroit like the lions more than people in detroit like the buzz is it's huge nationally probably and, and i i think in, in detroit and, and i will not blame a single lions fan for being gun shy about jumping full force under the bandwagon i get that i absolutely understand that i'm not going to chastise you for it but i will say that so many people around the league to cover other teams, good teams, are looking at the Detroit Lions and saying, they got next. And it's fun. I, it makes life a lot more fun. <laughs> you, you like talking about Vegas, right? And, and what yeah. they got going on. Do you know that the odds for the Lions to be, to win, the NFC has the Lions tied as the fourth most likely team. Now, let me go through this. Number one yeah, is the 49ers. It. 49ers, the most likely to win the Deserve, NFC. Deservedly so. Sure. They sure. should be. Yeah, yeah. The Eagles are number two. I think they're a little bit overrated. They lost the defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator. That's going to be hard to overcome both they're in also, a single year. They're and also going to lose a crap ton of free agents, too. Yep. So they... they, they it's going to be on Nick Sirianni to keep that window open because yeah. uh, they they're going to lose a ton this off season, but they're still very good. They have, they have, dare I say the best offensive line in football and they have a quarterback who's an emerging star. And yep. when you've got that, you've, you've, you got a lot, you've got, you got a lot less problems than a lot of other teams do. <laughs> yep. But I have a feeling Nick Sirianni's tears aren't going to be for the national anthem next year. Uh, after that, after the Eagles comes the Cowboys. That was wild. <laughs> uh, something. Um, Dallas, Cowboys no. Are third. Yeah, I know. I know. It's and no. Um, I will take Lions futures over Cowboys futures right now, straight up. Lions are, or the Cowboys are plus 600. The Lions are plus 1,100 in fourth place, tied with the Green Bay There's Packers. No and let me tell you, they've got us tied with the Packers at number four. And they don't even know if, if Rodgers is coming back. And to be very, very honest, I have a sense. I just this is a gut feeling. Okay, so so take it for that. I just have this feeling. Even if Rodgers is back, he's on the other side of good. I think this is the year. This this is the chance for the Packers to get value out of him to to let him to tra trade him away because I don't think he's going to have a good year this year. I think there's a lot of things that have stacked up in Aaron Rodgers' personal life as well as age in his real life. That are and 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 then the whole thing with Jordan Love and the threats over with uh, everything from him. I just don't think that this is going to be a good year in Green a good year in Green Bay if he stays. I, I honestly don't, and I think if he goes, it's not going to be a good year in Green Bay. I just can't see the Packers tied with the Lions at eleven hundred uh, for oh, four. And that's that, that's your betting inflation, though. Like yeah, like yeah. As, as I mentioned every off season. If you bet the under win total on every New York based sports team, New York City um, includes Brooklyn and New Jersey, you will never lose money in any year. Never. Because it's inflated because they're popular because it's New York. It's yeah. New York, baby, the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. I did win significant amount of money back in the day betting the under on the Knicks. Every single year they had Carmelo. That was free money. That was like, take my ten percent, Vic. I'll pay ten percent for it. Like, give me that. Like that. That that's free money. The Cowboys are like that as well. Yep. 
Yep. You can bet the under on the Cowboys, you're going to win a hell of a lot more than you lose. Now, that was not true in 2022. You got to add that in, um, in part because Cooper Rush was awesome. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he he bailed them out. But so uh, peaceful, Tim. This is a great point. We've seen it before. Then they drop the basket of eggs. It's a lot easier to get worse than it is to get better. And the the pride normally gets nervous about the hype. I agree. Yeah, we used no, to get nervous. Like, we I, used to get nervous about a Sunday night game or a prime time game because they just they always always choked it. I always were just it was just an embarrassment. But I point you to the Jets Thanksgiving game. game. I point you to the Thanksgiving game against Buffalo this year, who was a high-flying superstar team that barely pulled it out by three points the last second. And I point you to the Sunday night game where the Lions destroyed the Packers' hopes for making the playoffs this year. Two huge stages, two big stages, and this team performed. This is this is a lot bigger. These these you know winning the NFC, it's obviously huge. That's you know plus eleven hundred odds. I don't say that this is out of the realm of possibility at all for the team to to win the NFC. They have the talent. They're going to grow the talent this year, and they have that core of people growing together. This youth movement, it's three year three, and you always know third year is when you know what your guys have, when they get to their 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 real selves as a football player. Um, I I do not think the stage is too big or the lights are too bright for this team because they've grown to this. And after that last game of the season, they put the you know they put the league on notice that we do not melt under the lights. The heat of the lights yeah. do not fold us up. So um, I I it, do, I don't it doesn't mean that they will win. It doesn't mean yeah. that they will win, but they absolutely can win. Yeah. And that yeah. and the fact that we're saying that. And that we're not like being looked at like we're crazy. Well, we are, but but not not for that. Yeah. The, yeah. Like it's legit, man. Like people people around the country, like, and it's not just like your fringe, like, oh what you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a Novo team this I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Lions this year, because I think they might be good. No, like no, people that people that are into the game, people that study the game, people that are around teams, they're like, y'all got something really good going there. Yeah. And it, it's it's almost like it's it's difficult to find somebody outside of Detroit who's very skeptical about where the direction of the team is. Yeah. Um, I, I get that a lot more from within, and and again, I, I get that. Like I disagree with, but I, I I'm not I'm not going to fault anybody for being you know once bitten twice shy three times a lady. You know that's <laughs> I get that, but for sure, uh, I, I love I love, I love mixing my metaphors. That's a good one and, and my one. Commodore songs. Yeah, yeah. but uh, um, I. Uh, Really quick, I just, I, you know, Brett or Brandon, it's funny they believe in the Packers more than the Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings are at 1,400 below the Lions and Packers both. I mean, if you just take the betting lines you, in the division, you got the the Vikings number three. That's how much faith people have in that team. And I don't think that that's unwarranted to have them down there at, at, at third overall. Yeah. I, I, think they're, I think they're a better I, team yeah. likely than the Packers. And I think I they're going to give a nice run to the Lions, but I, I I feel like we're starting to see the tail end of the Vikings. I think this next year is going to be the last real push year of the Vikings before they have to re-scramble their eggs and try to push it to the they, top. They've got to get some pass rush. They've they've got to fix that. But they have they have a core in place that's certainly a playoff worthy. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to diss them because they won the division this year, um, and they, they deserved it. Uh, yep. They folded, of course, but... That that's that's a good football team, and they're not going to lose a great deal this offseason. Yeah, uh, yep, yep, yeah. Yep. If, if if overlook Minnesota at your peril, but Detroit on paper, there's no reason the Lions shouldn't be at least co at least co favorites with the Vikings. I think if you're betting on the Packers, I think I think you're giving your money away to people that probably don't need your money so much. Yeah. Yeah, they'll just build another palace with your money. All right, so yeah, great to see the the off season hype, loving it, and it's it, you see it in the odds, but you see it across the board. the The NFL is on notice, and and you and again, when you see this from the from the the media like this, as I told you from from inside every inside the building, people talking to people because they all talk to each other. The NFL is absolutely on notice. Players, agents. Coaches, the whole thing that Detroit is a destination is a destination, a place you want to be, and this is this. I, I I'm just I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that because it means so so much. And 
who doesn't want to be somehow affiliated with this team if they were to pull off a Super Bowl, bro? Whew. Oh, man. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Um, we oh talk about God. again. You know, there's a lot of talk about uh, free agency and and. The can, I, can I ask you something real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Real quick, did you watch the Chiefs parade victory parade at all? I did not. Did not. I was didn't away. either. I was. I thought you might, but yeah. I, I want. And I didn't see that one, but I I want to experience that so badly. Oh my God! I've seen a number of the parades. I did go to the Wings parade. Uh, when they when the first the first time they won the cup, and it was it was an absolute just like I said that one was. It was like post-coital, you know, refractory period for about a couple of weeks, man. Um, th- there was a lot of pain with, with Vladdy and, and that, but um, it was yeah. the, the, getting that out of the system and getting that it meant so so much, and um, it was it was it was great. The parade, the whole it was just also it was really really special. So um, this is this is a big deal. I want to talk a little bit. We're talking, you know, a lot of questions about free agency, which is coming up. A lot of questions about the draft. We just got through Senior Bowl, covered a lot of uh, p- people, uh, interviewed a lot of p- uh, players, including Hendon Hooker, which, thank you, Senior Bowl Wi-Fi. That'll never have. That was part of our after action we worked on. We got that. We got it. We got plenty of options for next year to make sure that never happens again. I'm both heartbroken and angrier than hell about that. But this week was really the reset of the team setting the table for 2023 and we wanted to make sure we got a lot of these things the coaching changes uh those uh, some of the things we're going to talk about still we'll talk about ben johnson coming back that was a real big one today but we want to really set the table for what this team is what to look for this season and then now starting next week we're really really going to start diving in on free agents and free agency comes first so 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 watch that because it's going to have a direct effect on how the draft plays out we're gonna have a couple sunday shows that we're gonna play as well we're gonna rotate through some of those talk about a lot of the free agent prospects then the draft prospects prospects going on but we're gonna start going pretty deep on these positional pieces you'll see fill in content as well we had uh scott bischoff had some great cornerback stuff um i know scott i love scott's sense of humor and i love his delivery i know some people have a thing about it whatever but the information he if, if you would Top shelf. That's just info. who Scott is, man. Yeah, Scott's been my I friend love, for 15 years. That's him. who he is. I love <laughs> his delivery in a sense of humor. It's dry, I and you got you got to get to learn it. But it's it's fantastic. Yeah. His info on those cornerbacks was killer. I tell you, it's a two part series. He talked about cornerbacks coming in the draft. Uh, Check it out. I will it's, tell you, I've watched all those guys. I learned things from listening to Scott. I when I because I I went back specifically on one of the players because I didn't see something that he saw, and I went looking for it and. Like, golly, I found it. So yeah. thank you, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Making me better. <laughs> he's he's a great guy. He's a, he's a great guy. He, but, he really is. And 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 extremely knowledgeable. Uh so he'll be in. We'll have we'll have uh, a couple a couple of those pieces as well. But we're gonna start going pretty deep on the stuff for you guys. So get ready because this is gonna be a year in where we 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 go we go far and, and wide and deep. So we wanna reset today, and that's what we're doing. Um really quick, let's talk about Aaron Glenn. Um, I don't think anyone else is interviewing Riz. I think that means he's back, right? <laughs> he is back. He's back. The man behind the mask. We he's, will. Uh, sorry, I listened to some Alice Cooper today. No, that's okay. We'll talk a little bit about Aaron Glenn and what that means, him coming back. And I, I've talked about so... this. Year one with Jared Goff, everybody was out on Jared. Jared, 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 Jared. And it was like, hold on. He had no talent around him. Let's get some talent around him. We got some talent around him. <sighs> wow, Jared Goff can play. He's he's not he's he surprised me. Everyone's surprised. Yeah, of course he he can play. He just needs talent around him. Now that connection between Aaron Glenn and Dan take, Campbell. Take what is, Chris just said. Put it right here. <laughs> <laughs> that connection between Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn was okay for the team. I'll wait a year. Just give me you, you you get your talent you need to make Jared work. And then I'll wait a year and I'll make it work with my guys. And it took six games and it worked. It started working. If you split the the defense up between the last part of the year and the first part of the year, (laughs) you see a complete difference in how that team is. There will be a lot of treasures spent on the defense this year. I 100% believe that. It's not all going to the defense. 
Don't don't think they won't. No, it's no, it is not. No, it is don't not. Think they won't spend an offense, but <laughs> you are going to see some impact hits on defense this year. That's going to push this team here and here <laughs> from the both sides will, of the ball. I will tell you that those of you who think that the first four picks are all going to defense, you're not going to like the draft if the, if you're going to be upset by that. They are not just looking at the defense, yep. and. Yep. Uh, uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough, tough road to hoe for some folks. But uh, and and the, you look at the teams that just won, were in the Super Bowl. They're teams that win by outscoring what their defense allows. The Lions can be that team with a couple more prudent offensive pieces. I think they and Chris, I know you think this too. They know where those spots are mm -hmm. and where mm -hmm. they can spend on it specifically in free agency or the draft or mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. in one case. Um, and you know what I'm talking about there. Defense, they're going to hit definitely early in the draft. They're going to hit it often in the draft, but not exclusively in the draft and also not exclusively in free agency. Uh, again, everybody who's like, they've got to just spend everything on defense. Nope. Nope. Not going to happen. Yeah. Sorry to burst your bubble on that. They're going to get a lot better. They're going to add players that are going to make you very excited. Very excited. I I don't I don't know who, but I know I trust where they're looking and what rocks they're kicking over right now. That I I'm I will excited about it, man. I, I I am too. And I want to. Peaceful Tim did a great job here with this. Aaron Glenn is needing more pieces. I have yet to see him waste a player that was talented. And those words That's are true. exactly yes. how they're going to spend in that place. He knows how to use talent. He can turn up. Look at look at uh, Malcolm Rodriguez, right? What a great six-round guy starting, right? He didn't waste any ounce of that guy's talent. And that guy grew as the year went on. Was he... Perfect. No. Does he have weight places to grow? Absolutely. Did he absolutely get the job done? A hundred percent he did. And that's what Aaron Glenn gets out of these guys. And that's what Dan Campbell sees in Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn is going to get pieces this year. I guarantee he's going to get very big, impactful pieces. And they're going to spend on the defense. But don't yes, think they're they going to do it exclusively. Because there are places on the offense that they are going to put money and turn this team Turn this yes. team into while they still can more, because again we talked about it earlier with with the golf situation but irregardless of golf they've got to pay a lot of people next off season so now is the time where if you're going to get those guys in let's you know the python swallowing the deer with the cap hit swallow that now yep mm -hmm. <laughs> that deer makes for big poop though all right uh let's <laughs> let's get on to the next one you can ask the saints about that <laughs> <laughs> ask the snake <laughs> he's, he's the one that can't sit all right jerry jacobs was talking about improving his ball skills uh at he the did. super bowl with tim 20 and uh we also kind of simultaneously got a question from the slack about what do the young guys need to improve upon and Riz, I'm going to start off with something. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to toss this to you. But I'm going to start off with something, and it's it's so simple, but it is the number one thing that defensive players don't do in the jump from college to pros. They need to wrap up. They need to wrap up. They always need to wrap up. And and that's the, I love you love big. Well, hits. That's actually what made muscle. Rodrigo. <laughs> That's what made Rodrigo special as a rookie was he did that. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Delmas missile was always fun to watch. Who's he going to injure this play, friend or fro? But you know what? So many times he bounces off and they go, oh, that hurt, but I'm still running, and off they go. Rap Freaking love Lewis player. Delmas, man. I love oh. that guy. I love that, too. He wasn't, wasn't as second, great as I wanted him to be. The second most Here. broken face mask behind Corey Schlesinger goes as a Lewis Delmas process, probably. But anyway, wrap oh, if only those he had guys these. up. So I, I know that's a, a kind of a broad statement, but that's the one thing. If I could tell every defensive player uh, as a coach, just day one, walk in, opening speech. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Dan Campbell. All right, first thing I want to talk about defense, wrap the motherfuckers up. <laughs> Starting off the I season, will. period. <laughs> And I'm yelling that specifically 
to Kirby Joseph, to um, what bleeps his name? Derek Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> like those two need it more than anybody else. Aleem actually needs a little bit of work there too. So I'll, I'll get into Jerry here. So I, a couple of weeks ago, uh, before the senior bowl, one of the things that I said was that I, I want Jerry to improve his ball skills. So without further ado, this is what Jerry Jacobs, and I'm going to read this as a quote. Um, I'm reading it from his interview with Tim Twentyman. Um, thanks, Tim, for, for getting this. But this is what this is Jerry. As soon as the offseason hit, I knew one thing that I really needed to do was go tell my DB trainer. I think it was finding the ball. I'm there every time, and as soon as I ended the season, I called him and I said, hey, if you can help me find the ball, we'll be millionaires around here. And he, he talked about a few other things, and he said, it's the truth. We've been working on that a lot. Finding the ball is the most important part of my game right now. Jerry, thank you for listening. Yeah, I'm sure I'm, I know you, Jerry. I know you're smart enough to realize that on your own, but I'd like to take just a teensy little bit of credit for like pushing you that way. <laughs> I need that sometimes, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, you. because Cheer Cheer it's a hole in his game, and I'm glad that he acknowledges he's not afraid to acknowledge that he's not perfect, but he's got to get better at things. I've been around players that don't do that. That's one of the reasons why the Browns fell off so badly because a couple of the guys are like, I don't need to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did, and you didn't, and your team sucks now because of it. That's Gee, one of the I, things I'm very proud. I'm proud of Jerry for being proactive here. It's I really one of am. the things I really, really love about Jerry is he it's and it comes out of where he came from, right? He's yes. done nothing but bust his tail for everything he's ever gotten. And you have guys that have been able to sit back on this natural talent. And I don't want to say that he's not talented at all. That's not what I'm saying. But guys that have just sat back on natural talent and, and coasted their way to the top, right? They go to the practice, they work, they do their thing, but they've always been the best and they get there and they make it to the top and, they, and then that's their thing. And a lot of guys, they wash out when that's the way they go. Jerry has done nothing but bust his ass from the ground all the way up to what he's doing today in his personal life, in his professional life, in school. I mean, my guy started out at Hutchinson Community College in playing football in, in a community college, and he's in the NFL as a UDFA, a starting corner. This is a guy whose heart and soul is 150% into his game. And he didn't get to where he is today by being blind to areas that he needed to improve on. He did it because he cares, because he's smart, because he's good at what he does. And he's also a guy, I'll just, just I'll tell you what I know. He's never forgotten where he came from and the people that were there when he, where he came from. He's a wonderful fucking human being. Jerry Jacobs, I, I love this guy. I love to see a guy like this find success. Uh, we've we've talked a little bit about, you know, coming up the different way, the harder way. And um, he, we, you know, we different lives. He's not but, chosen the easy path, nor has no? the easy path been easy for him to find. No, nope. different lives but similar kind of stories, right? And and we, we kind of can relate with some of those things along the way. Um, he's he's a guy, I he is like my 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 soul, right? <laughs> I, I love this guy. Oh. And for him to say that, to, 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 to say that, like you said, Riz, to see specifically, I mean, it, him, his coaches, he's so coachable. He's such a guy, and the locker room loves him on offense, yes, on do. defense, across the board. Yes, you do. cannot not like Jerry and who he is. Uh, and and you see him oh. say exactly what you're saying, Riz. And I know I'm on a on a little bit of a Jerry rant here, but that's him. That's him. That's that's freaking him. Yes, I, I wish every player had that kind of visibility and vision and and self awareness and ability to look at themselves for improvement because there is not one player on that field who can't be better than they are today. There's not one person 100%. doing this podcast, watching, listening to this podcast, and they can't do what they do better than they do today. I don't care how right. good you think you are, you can be better. And if you can recognize it and you can recognize your true areas to improve, that makes you a special person. Makes you a special person, bro. It absolutely does. And uh, I'll just say on this front, uh, there's a prominent mock draft that came out today that intimated that Amani Orowarie was still the starting outside corner opposite Jeff Okuda. And I will tell you that that person doesn't know a thing about the Detroit Lions, especially with who they projected, who that person projected, not one, but both first round picks 
complete cluelessness. And that happens. Like, I get that. Not every national person is going to know everything about every team. I'm putting out a mock draft, hopefully tomorrow at Real GM. It might not wind up going up until Friday. Um, And there are teams where I'm just like, I don't really know. So you know what I do? I call people who do know. And I try to get their best guess from it. That's pretty stupid. Because I, I... I'm trying to get better at this, Chris. I, Can't you just try it, up? man? Just make it up, dude. Um, Nobody's gonna know. In some cases, I I do. Like it's 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 the it's the pre combine senior bowl. Actually, it's the post Super Bowl mock draft. We get the pre combine mock drafts coming soon. Then you get the post combine mock drafts. Then you get the post free agency mock draft. Then you get the penultimate mock draft. Then you get the what I would do mock drafts, and then you get the final mock draft. That's that's my schedule for the next three months, <laughs> two uh, months, so, so two and a half months. Doing, will you be doing any mock drafts, though? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, try to I will have a new mock <laughs> new mock off season for the Lions, which are those have been pretty popular. Uh, should drop Sunday. Um, I'm going to be in Detroit this weekend watching my daughter play volleyball uh, at whatever they call Huntington Place downtown now. Uh, so I won't have a great deal of time, but I hope to have it finished before I get there. Um, and it will roll on Sunday morning. So, by the way, if you're playing, if you're one of the, there are going to be, I think, 11,000 teenage girls playing volleyball in Detroit this weekend. If you're one of the parents for them, please don't, come find me. Don't, um, don't, I'll don't, be the guy wearing earplugs. Don't focus the creeps. <laughs> don't focus the creeps. Don't, don't tell them where to go. Come on. <laughs> All right. Let's talk really quick. Some other things. Ooh. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah. Oh. You don't, don't, oh. you don't advertise that sort of stuff. I don't, oh. I legitimately There's don't think people. about that stuff. Just bad people, bro. That's yeah. all I think about is the There's... people you got to. Keep away. Uh, all right, let's talk about other things oh, that shit, the man. young guys Ugh. can improve upon. Riz, what else do we have besides that? So Jer- Jerry covered himself pretty darn nicely. James Jerry Houston covered- is a guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know where I was going. James <laughs> Houston is a guy. James Houston needs to learn how to win after he loses. Because right now, if he wins off the snap, he's phenomenal. If he doesn't win, he's useless. That's not that's not a shot at him. That's not an unusual status for a late round pass rusher. He's got to learn how to develop counter moves and how to read and get off a block once it's on him because he does not do that well at all right now. And the fact that he got what what do you get eight eight and a half eight sacks this year as a rookie yep, yep. and limited playing time that he did. Tells you how incredible he is when he does win, because holy crap, that's incredible. But if he can figure those things out, then all the mock drafts that have Miles Murphy or um, any number of pass rushers in the first two rounds are going to look asinine because they've already got their two. When John Kaminsky comes back, they've got their three. When when one of the Okwara brothers shows up healthy, they've got their four. Guess what? Position of least need on the entire team. And you heard this, Chris. Andy Sandman, you heard this in Mobile. The Lions know that too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Guaranteed (laughs) they know that too. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Guaranteed. Doesn't mean they won't add somebody of some consequence later, but if you're thinking they're taking one at 6 or 18, or 49, or even whatever the, I think it's 56 is the Vikings pick, or spending over more money than they're paying Charles Harris to go away, or Romeo Aquara, one of them won't be back. Um, they, they just, they have to, one of them has to go. Um, you're wrong. Sorry, you're wrong. <laughs> they're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, so another... I just saw it flash by. Somebody asked if Jared Davis is coming back. He's a New York Giant. He will, He won't be back. Don Burr says he had to pick up his phone charger that he left behind. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, I'll I'll tell you one other thing I want to see an improvement on, and and this is something I think it was a little bit sloppy. We got lucky. Um, It wasn't because of the sharpness, but I'd like to see Panay sharpen up his route running a little bit. Um, It was that, (laughs) that out was a little bit sloppy, rounded it a little bit. I'd like to see it a little sharper. 
And, um, I mean, he held on well. He didn't have to go down. He did a little bit of a Hawkinson there. He could have stayed on his feet, got a couple more yards. But, I mean, he did well. I'm, I'm not going to knock him down, but he's definitely has has some work on that. I'd like to see him improve his yeah. his route running a little In bit. In all seriousness, he still needs to work. So last offseason, his big thing was he had to improve his inside shoulder and pass protection. Mm -hmm. He did that. Got a lot got a lot better with his inside arm and coordinating his movements. I would. Now he's got to get better. He's got to get better at penalties. He still commits too many penalties. Pre-snap penalties. He had six this year. That's four more than any other Lions offensive lineman. Like that that's the difference between being like all pro and pro bowl for him because he's got that potential with with the blocking. He's got to clean up those little mistakes. And that, that's attention to detail. And again, he's still so freaking young. Like he's yeah. going to get better at it. I'm I'm not worried about today, but no. um, for a couple I'll other guys, you, that, I'll tell you for, really for, really quick about him. Something that no one yeah. either knows or hasn't talked about. He was fighting a high ankle for a lot of the, the season. Go back and watch, and you you can see it. Mm -hmm. Um, he he quietly fought a high ankle issue with uh, for a lot of the season last year, and um, did it as well put, as Patrick Mahomes did in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, with, without all the, you know, it, it, the grimacing may have been just his mean face, right, for <laughs> Mug and for some of the other people. But that was, that was while he, when he made that, that, uh, that sweet ass first down catch, that was, he was still dealing with it then. So, um, you know, good you on got, him. You got to learn to play him, through those things and not have experimental surgery on those things. Him and, and, uh, Frank, what they played through, and even Decker the year before, what they played yeah. through, man. Those, yeah. they, the, when you call it the trenches, I don't think many people know just how violent that is. Like hands to the face, the, the blows to the throat that happen all the frigging time. Frank Ragnall's throat gets broken. His throat got broken last it's year. still crazy to me. I mean, yeah, yeah. He got a broken throat. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the violence that happens in, those, in, in, in the trenches there in lines is incredible. Incredible, and to see both Penne and Frank played through things that would have sat down other linemen on other teams. I'm just telling you, these guys are absolute animals. Animals, what they will play through and how well they'll play through it. We are blessed with the guys we have on our offensive line, and in um, much like people kind of just took kicking as automatic from Eddie Murray to Jason Hansen to Nate Freeze. Whoops, wrong one. No, yeah, that. Nate Freeze. That's the one, right? That's the one. Nate Freeze. That's what I was going for. Sorry. Oh, my God. What happened? What happened? Kicking? What? What? It was, it was what? 15 years? 20 years? That we never had to worry about kicking? And all of a sudden, Nate Freeze showed up. And people, like, freaked out all of a sudden. Um that's what's like going to happen when prayer? these guys do move on. I don't know <laughs> that I have seen a team with or will see a Lions team with players this dedicated, this tough, and this good. That combination is incredible. We have a hell of an offensive line in there. And and then you, when, with, with Hank, the dedication that that group has amongst the coaches and players is is absolutely unmatched. Unmatched. Oh, and Acres, too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Gave me a couple of Acres. <laughs> the Ryan Santoso era. Who can forget? He was Ultra Rosas. I liked Ryan Santoso. Yeah. That guy could do it. He was massive. Yeah. He was he was a big dude. He was. Yeah. Um a couple other of young guys that have areas to improve. Kirby Joseph, learn to not leave your feet when you're making a tackle, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um that is so you're going to see Illinois has defensive backs, plural, in this draft who are going to interest the Lions. They all do it like it's they're, like they're taught to do it. And it's weird because it's not – and it worked for him in college. Um, I would say if, if there's one thing about Devon Witherspoon, he will launch from too far away at times to make his tackle. Um, that, that's a very valid criticism if you're concerned about him being the pick at six. Um, if you're concerned about Sidney Brown being the pick at whatever the Vikings pick is, 56, um, yeah. that's a valid, valid concern. He doesn't rap. Kirby Joseph doesn't rap very well um, and also will launch from too far away. He's no Those Eminem. are things that he's got to work on. 
Yeah. Yeah. No. Still, and, still, still a great player, but room for improvement. There's things yeah. you can find. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so the other guy will say that that oh, can get better is DeAndre Swift. Learn to play when you're not 100. percent He started to do it a little bit at the end of the season. Now your coaching nemesis is gone. Carry that crap on, baby, and you're yeah. going to be in Detroit for another contract. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. All you folks that hit the like, we appreciate that. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button. You're here having a good time. It's while all free. Down there. <laughs> this, this, this YouTube app is asking me, hit the ad, hit the ad. I'm not hitting the ad button. I'm letting you guys, just, we're just hanging out here, right? Hit the like button. Just help us out. Hit the subscribe button. Help us out. And I don't have to hit the ad button. It's, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship between us all. This is your show. You don't want me to hit that. So we can rock and we can roll that way. Um, I want to talk a little bit. So we talked about... Um, what what can be approved on? I want to talk a little bit again about next week. We're talking about uh, the huge push yeah. on free agency. A little bit about some draft chat. And and Riz, I just want to go to my two. It's it's this is a love affair. It's two. I have, I've walked out of the Senior Bowl with a love affair with two players. One of which we oh. actually got to interview, which was was I'm stoked about. Um, but two guys, and neither one of them is a wide receiver. That's uh, that's I, very strange for you. It's out of character for you. Neither I I didn't walk away madly in love with any of the wide receivers, but of course Diane Henley. Oh my uh, Diane Henley. Oh my God. Great kid. Great, yes. great human being, first and foremost. Character cat. A guy that the Lions are gonna love on that end at that end of the, the game. And then his motor on the field and he's exactly the kind of linebacker the lions need safety turned linebacker he's ripped. exactly what everybody wanted miles killebrew to be yeah 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 um he's I, I mean, what pittsburgh he's what pittsburgh hopes devin bush will be once again yeah. in the future he ain't gonna be that guy xylophones get jealous at his abs i mean he is a guy and i'm telling you we, you know, the weigh-in's different now. It's not as good as it was historically for the the Senior Bowl, and I think we miss I a lot. Don't get to watch dudes walk in their underwear. Sad. We we miss a lot not having that. I mean that yeah. not just you know beyond all the the other stuff, but we miss a lot because you can tell a lot about a guy depending on his position and how he comes in, how how he how athletic his body is, how much time he spends with the weights. You can tell a lot about guys that do or don't spend the time. The one that I will never, ever live down, and I'll never forget because I loved my descriptions and my different things that I had my codes for the guys, but Hunter Renfro looks like a punter. I mean, that's what I said, right? And the guy had the, he was like balding. He was like, he just didn't, I'm like, this guy, no way. And run around like crazy man. That one blew me away. But so Henley, absolutely. And then, you know, Darnell Wright. <sighs> oh my Dude. God, bro. Add, add Wright to that crew. Throw him in at right guard, and you have the greatest offensive line to ever play in the National Football League, period. He that's, is that's my... so easy to compare to Panay Sewell. He's not as high-end as Panay, mm -hmm. but they play. They are cut from the same cloth, to steal Brad and Dan's expression. They are peas in the same pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, the Lions are not, not going to take him, unfortunately. I, I, I sorry, but he... I just hope he doesn't wind up. I really don't want him in Chicago in the because North. him in yeah, front of a North. running quarterback is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That guy, he's a right tackle. Uh, he's going to be an NFL right tackle. Same as Panay. Like you could see it as soon as as soon as you want, flipped on the film with Panay. That's a right tackle. Like you get that with yeah. Darnell Wright too. Like yeah. Lane Johnson was the same way. That dude, that's gonna that guy's gonna be great at right tackle. He'll be good at left tackle. Put him, put him on the right side, and it's exactly what you want. Because, and the theory behind that is most teams run right-handed, so you want your better run-blocking tackle on the right side. Yeah, yeah. I can you imagine Panay Sewell taking a snap and running behind on the to the right behind Ragnow, Skips, and Panay, <laughs> or and, and and sorry, um, Panay taking the snap, and you got Ragnow, Skipper, and Wright. Across the right side, behind you would just—I mean, he could—he could pick up like from a first and ten, he could get ten yards. It'd be incredible. I mean, that kind of that kind of line would be incredible. Would just 
incredible, incredible. So I've got a couple guys that I'm really, really, really big on. Um, can we nickname this O-line? It, it sounds like fun. Let's see what we can do. Um, we'll think about that. Think about maybe we'll yeah. do, uh, you know what, for next show, I want you guys to think it up. Think about it. Have a think on it for this week. And uh, we'll, we'll do a part where we ask you to come in in the chat with your uh, O-line Because I'm nicknames. terrible at these things. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm terrible at that. So do what you can. Help me out here. I'll, I'll give you due credit whenever I quote you on it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll I'm, I'm not good at that credit. kind of stuff. We'll give you, we'll I'm, give you I'm, I'm, credit. I'm weirdly creative, but oddly uncreative at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. I know you, so it makes perfect sense, Riz. It does, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Don't forget about seatbeltgang.com. Jerry Jacobs and the Seatbelt Gang, he's got all kinds of great merch there. A uh, portion of that goes to help charities in Detroit, and you can do your part, and you can look cool doing it. Also, don't forget about us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast. If you join for at least $5 a month, you'll get access to the Slack. You'll get an email shortly after you, you join. It'll be to your email address that you sign up with Patreon. It'll be an invite to get into the Slack. The Slack, there's... 40 channels at least different channels of people there's hundreds it's of people in good. there we, we, we talked about the intelligence relative of cows this week <laughs> there country. is about 400 people in there i believe right now and it's a group of people that feels yeah. like 10 of your closest friends um absolutely a fantastic group and any question is good yeah. there's mock drafts there's a um, yeah. a special fantasy league among, amongst the folks there if you're in our fantasy leagues look for your payouts tomorrow it's going to happen tomorrow so so do that but go to pay, uh, patreon.com slash detroit lions podcast get in help support the show it helps support all these things we, we're doing and uh makes you know you'll, you'll enjoy it trust me in the off season if you want intelligent chat um, the reddit ain't doing it and the other places ain't doing it the, the slack is absolutely the place to be that little barrier of a couple of bucks keeps the dopes out keeps the trolls it out makes and makes such a difference out. yeah people charge i haven't had access. to block anybody like it's great no no never uh, i don't, people I don't like blocking people on Twitter. I, I blocked like nine people on this during the super bowl i'm just like you people suck yeah. people charge access for content and, and wind up with a caustic community we charge access to the community and it is the most intelligent community it's, anywhere it's i'm great. telling you 100 percent. and by the way um I posted a thing of my, of personal note to me yesterday. I thank you all for the the nice response. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. It meant something to me and the other person I mentioned. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeff Risen, as you see spelled beneath, beneath that beautiful mug at Jeff Risen, and at D E T Lions Podcast. D E T Lions Podcast. Riz, I just happened to look. I, I, I hit the button and it flew over to my profile. We're like real close to six thousand followers on the podcast now. Hey, I, I, I don't usually watch that stuff. Nice. I was like, oh, wow, well, look at that. So go to nice. at DET Lions Podcast, be number 6K, be number 5,992, whatever. Just, just get over there and, and subscribe, join the club. It's a lot of fun. Pants free. And uh, we had a little joke before the show, but we, we kept it to ourselves about being pants free. <laughs> But it is a Lions tradition, okay? We'll just stick with Jim Bob Cooter. It's a, it's a Lions tradition to be pants-free, just like us on Twitter and uh, at doing the podcast. Seriously choked up right now. Like, oh, we, we, I'm glad we opted not to do that. <laughs> that would have required too much explanation after the fact. Yes, yes. Um, give us a call on Skype, Detroit Lions podcast, or call us on the Lions line at 248-782-8384, 248-782-8384. 248 rub you fug we'll take your uh the, the the best messages we'll put them on the air and also that's our live number when we do shows that uh where we take uh calls also let's we'll, we'll think of something to give away a prize if somebody comes up with a real solid nickname for the offensive line that we really really like we'll we'll yeah. throw some kind of prize together we'll get you something we'll, we'll, we'll figure we'll, it out come up with we'll, a name we'll, yeah we will get you something maybe, maybe if maybe Maybe it'll be like a premium draft guide of your choice. Something like that. We could do. I know what to do, Riz. I know what to do. Oh, sorry. No, no. Okay. You're, you're, you're going oogie. Um, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do it on Twitter. And we'll announce it next week on next week's show. That's what we'll do. So if you have, and tell everybody, just and in, in, uh, if you have a, a, a name for the Detroit Lions offensive line, um, let's see. Come up with it. Tweet it at DET Lions Podcast and at Jeff Risden. Um, at minimum at DET Lions Podcast if you get limited on characters for the name, whatever. Tweet us your favorite offensive line name and use hashtag 
DLP O-Line Love. There you go. DLP O-Line Love. Uh, use that hashtag so we can sort through them and find them all. D hashtag DLP O-Line Love. And tweet at DET Lines Podcast and hit us up with your best offensive line nicknames. And uh, let's come up with something by next week. We'll announce a winner and we'll, we'll put something together for that. Uh, worthy of the quality of the winning submission. So we will absolutely have a winner, but if it's if it's trashy and getting nothing, so come up with something good. <laughs> 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 Hashtag DLP O-Line okay. Love. There you go. That's fun. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, peaceful team. All right. Uh, let's see. Also, come to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast. That way we can do what, Riz? We can come into your ear holes automatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you guys hated it last oh, week when yeah. we didn't come in your ear holes, didn't you? Right? Right? You, you, miss, you missed it. You need for me to say. I'm tired. We need to end this show, Chris. I got to go to bed. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs. No problems, baby, because we are your Detroit Lions. And something better soon at Reddit Connection. <laughs>